<clears throat> Welcome. You're listening to The Dollop. Uh, we're on the All Things Comedy Network, and we are an American history podcast. Now, each week, I, juke owner, labradoodle daddy. Oh, a new <laughs> low has been found. You know, because you just spit on your mic of how and, bad that and is. And hammock. Labradoodle daddy. And hammock. Ugh. Liar in her. Oh, my God. Dave Anthony, we just story from American history to his friend. <laughs> Gareth Reynolds, who has no idea what the topic is going to be about. Labradoodle daddy. It's my maple. Uh, it's my girl. <laughs> Go with Labradaddy. How dare you? How dare you? How dare you? There's an official term that we use in the circuit. Labradoodle, and it's Labradoodle daddy. daddy. Oh, you did a spit take. I got it on the back of my jacket. I got a Labradoodle daddy uh. jacket, and I ride around my Harley. <laughs> Oh my God! Ooh, the Labradoodle Daddy! What? Yeah, you got it, girl. No. And called it quote his jam pad. Jam pad? I'm the fucking hippo guy. Dave, okay. My name's Gary. <laughs> my name's Gary. Wait, is it for fun? And this is not going to become the Tiggly Podcast. Okay. <laughs> this is like anarchy. On a five-part coefficient. <laughs> my room's flat. Now hit him with the puppy. You both present sick arguments. <laughs> no sleep tell hippo. No sleep tell hippo. Uh, action part. Hi, Gary. No. Yes, he done, my friend. No. No. <laughs> Rhoda. Rhoda in the court. Oh. Oh. I couldn't hear it. We couldn't hear it. Song's over. Should wear headphones every now and then. Uh, we had him taken away because uh, I trust Take this them away. I trust this guy over here. Fra Frank is Frank. Frank's one of the best in the biz. God damn it. Um, let me ask you something. Okay. Gareth. Yeah. Let's say you're a guy and uh, you're having some issues. You're having a lot of issues right now. Okay. Is this the same guy as the other guy we sometimes No, talk this is about? a totally different guy. New guy. Yeah. Okay. So say you, you double tariffs and uh, on aluminum and steel and you, and you put tariffs on soybeans and farmers are totally screwed and all the business are going out of business. S hypothetical person. Yeah. And say you had this, you say you had a woman named uh, Amorosa that you had working for you, just a random. Now I'm going to have to that's stop like, you. That's like a version of Larry. That's super specific. Um, and, and say she came super. out and said that you're a racist and you use the N word all the time. I think if that's the case that you should, uh, you should try Squarespace. Talkspace. Shit. Let's try Talkspace. Yeah. Squarespace wouldn't help you at all with that. No. <laughs> no. I didn't use the nword.com. <laughs> no, you should definitely go to Talkspace. Um, it's an online therapy company, so sure. that makes more sense than using Squarespace, which For is sure. a web page company. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, Talkspace lets you message a licensed therapist from anywhere at any time, whereas Squarespace, you just put up a web page. Yeah, right. No, Talkspace makes way, way more sense way more for this sense. guy. Yeah. I don't know if this guy, this hypothetical guy, would yeah, be able yeah. to make a website. Uh, no, he probably wouldn't. He would probably uh, yell things at it and then cry and eat a hamburger. All you need for Talkspace is a computer, an internet connection, or a Talkspace mobile app, and then you're ready to get go. You don't, you don't have to... T therapy isn't about getting into your childhood and all that stuff. You can talk about everyday stuff to help you with maneuver the everyday nightmare that you've created of being a racist. Specific. Again, specific. Like if someone said when you were hosting Celebrity Apprentice, quote, my certainty, certainty is about the N-word tape and his frequent uses of that word were the top of a high mountain of truly appalling things I had experienced with him during the last two years in particular. Um, she, if that was said about you, that you was, might like want to reach was, out. Yeah, you would reach out to talk Talkspace to someone and, about it. And, and ask someone about that, what you should, how you should handle that. Um, there's no, uh, no commutes, right? No, you're not going to an office anymore. You just Comfort send a your message, own home. call someone up. Comfort Remember? of the White House toilet. That's right. Having a therapist simply provides you a designated person for you to talk to who is trained to listen and help you make positive changes. The Talkspace platform has over 2,000 licensed therapists who are experienced in addressing life cha challenges we all face. To match with a perfect therapist for a fraction of the price of traditional therapy, go to Talkspace.com slash dollop and use code dollop to get $45 off your first month and show your support for this talk show. Is it a talk show? It's not a talk show. What is it? Podcast for this podcast that's dollop and talkspace.com slash dollop. Sometimes I don't know. Did you lose part of your memory recently? This could be a podcast. 
This is a podcast. It's not a talk show? It's not a talk show. Are you saying this could be a talk show or a podcast? This could it be is a, a podcast. No, I'm, I'm interviewing you. Here. You're not interviewing me. We've never talked about ourselves. I invited you down for the first time. We're talking about uh, oh my God. swim shorts. Okay. Frank? <laughs> Frank! Uh, also, uh, we here at The Dollop are sponsored by Third Love. Third Love is a, a br- brassiere company? Sure. Bra? Yeah. You probably call it a bra in your in your line of work? Yeah, my line of work. You yeah, we call it a bra a in my line of work. Carpenter? Yeah. My wife uh, my wife purchased a third bra when uh, when they were like, hey, what do you guys think about third bra? I was like, I'll tell you what I think about third bra. And third I, love then, or third bra? Sorry. Wow. Jesus. I'll tell you what I think about third love. Th- right. I haven't been drinking. I'm just tired. What is it's going been a long on? day. It's been a long <laughs> day. Did you fall asleep in the sun or something? It was hot. I was out a lot today yeah. With, yeah, with my kid. He's been using the. Um, he should not be using third that. love. He's about he's about uh, two hundred and forty pounds. Okay, sure. Okay, uh, no. So my wife ordered one. Uh, she's like, "This is nice." I don't, I don't know what it means. She enjoys the bra. Um, she says it's a nice fit. Um, it holds us. I mean, I don't know how good. much you're supposed to talk. Yeah, me I don't know. It, uh, at some point, it, at some point, it bra. crosses over into weird. Yeah. Just, I mean, I, I know think she what likes you could it. say is that yeah, it, yes, she likes the bra. Of the bra. padding got padding. She likes the. Sure. I asked her a question. She was like, I don't want to talk about this. And that's fair. But you're asking from a different standpoint. You're allowed to now, you know. Be like, hey, tell me about tell me about Walk your, me through it. Talk, talk me through your third love bra. Is it your third love? Yeah. Which would be me. You get out a pe- pen and pad of paper and you Look, sort of lay down in your tummy and you have your legs kicked up and you're like, dish, girl. If the third love bra is is actually the third love in her life, first it's, first it's probably my kid and then it's me and then it's probably the bra and then the dog. Right. So she's the Labradoodle mommy. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Sad little situation. Um, you know, third love helps you identify your breast size and shape and find styles that fit your body. So that's good for you. Uh, they I know cups. that I, I had a friend who recently was like, I've been wearing the wrong bra. I've, I've heard women say yeah, that before. Yeah. They, the, I've been, it's, I'm 38. I just found out yeah. I got the wrong bra. <laughs> yeah. 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 That happens. And as a guy, you're like, I go through that with I, boxers. That's not a thing I that happens. I don't know how it works. I don't know. I don't know how it works. Um, it's super comfortable, tagless, no itching, straps won't slip, ultra soft, smooth fabrics, lightweight, super thin, memory foam cups. That's what we talked about earlier. Thank you. Um, Third Love guarantees a perfect fit. Returns and exchanges are free and easy. Okay. Third Love knows there's a perfect bra for everyone. So right now, they're offering our listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash dollop now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash dollop for 15% off. Ta-da! Boom. Uh, well, David, I'm going to plug a couple of stand-up dates. August uh, 19th, which is uh, this coming Sunday, I will be at Stand Up Live in Huntsville, Alabama at 7 p.m. Uh, headlining a little baby, and uh, that's the medical term. And then no. September 7th and 8th, I'll be at Cap City Comedy in Austin, uh, headlining four shows there. That's Friday, the 7th of September, <laughs> and the 8th of September. And now uh, you can go to GarethRollins.com. Uh, I used Talkspace to build a website. Yeah, yeah. Hey, he still got it. Um, we have a gig coming up this weekend that is not sold out. Uh, Minneapolis, where they're Friday, that's sold out. Saturday is not sold out yet. There's not that many tickets left, though, so you might want to jump on it. Um, we're going to be in Cleveland on the 14th. We'll be at Pittsburgh. Oh, Pittsburgh sold out. Sorry. But we'll uh, be there. We have Australia shows coming up. Uh, right now we have uh, one on sale. It's less tickets left to 9, 28, 18. At September um, at the Highline Ballroom in New York City, uh, jump on those while you can because those are going fast. Uh, then well, we're going to go to moving real quick. You got Australia. We'll be in Perth, Brisbane, Adelaide, Southern Bay, Byron Bay, Canberra, Sydney, Melbourne, Hobart. Um, so get on those and then go to just go to dollop uh, dollopodcast.com. Dollop, com. Yeah, uh, go hit the tour tour, tour page. It's tour page. All there. Hit the tour uh, page. Also, Houston uh, just happened, and we had a second show in Boston. All right, so there you go, everybody. Yeah, don't scream at me. Yeah, yeah. Take I don't, it easy I don't know why David. you're mad right now, but somehow you're mad, and I don't understand what happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Um, and I'm sorry we took too long with that. I know a lot of you guys are mad about that. I'm sorry. But you got the voice, Salt Lake City show. I'm sorry, up my stuff. voice isn't always right. Uh, I apologize for that. The Salt Lake um, City. There was an, the audio was enough to get one up. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Emma. Uh, um, Emma. Was sent us a file because the guy never recorded the show. 
right. in Salt Lake City. Well, and I think one of the things that people don't know about podcasts, like live podcasts, is you, if you don't record them, you can't release them. That's right. There yeah. has to be a podcast. Yeah, you have to have that recorded. That is correct. There right. must be a podcast. Yes, exactly. So, um, so he just recorded hissing, which is not great. He probably, he probably, I assume he put in the wrong inputs. That would be my... Uh, People are asking why we don't bring a uh, sound guy with us because these clubs have sound guys, professional sound guys, and mm -hmm. they're supposed to be competent. And what we would do is we would hire one, and then he would come out, and then we would go, oh, you're not good either. Um, so that's just a thing. And yeah. what it would do to us. I mean, we have a good rhythm going yeah, together on the road. We don't want to have a third wheel. Nope. No you know, for wheel. our Starbucks there's, stops. There's and sound stuff. guy. Larry, last thing we're going to bring is Frank over here. I barely Frank, know Frank. Frank. Yeah, bring old Frank. <laughs> May as well bring a uh, pillowcase of nails. Oh, hey. what's up, Frankie? Uh, hey, Frank. How you doing, boy? Frankie. Is there anything else? Oh, I think that's it. July 20th, 1887. Okay. William Floyd Collins was born in Auburn, Logan County, Kentucky. All right. Yeah. He had five brothers and two sisters. Much of Kentucky is what is known as karst topography. Karst? Yeah. Now, you're, uh, you watch a lot of documentaries about animals and stuff. They yeah. were going to the cave systems. You ever learn about caves at I've all? I've watched stuff about caves. Sure. Okay. So karst, karst, K-A-R-S-T, -S is a, it's soluble rocks. It's, it's limestone. It's, it's things like that, right? Okay. Uh, and, and it's in a wet area. So what happens is underground, you get a lot of caves, you get a lot of sinkholes, you get a lot of underground streams. Yeah. So Kentucky's got a lot of caves. Right. Okay. So Floyd started uh, exploring Kentucky's caves all by himself when he was six. Okay. That's uh, And again, I'm sure there's someone listening who's going, hey, that's a shocking thing to hear. Hey, guys, relax. At six, you're, you're, it's time to get down some of these, yeah. these caves. Go have a look in yeah, a yeah. black cavernous hole alone. It's sick. I mean, you know, a lot of people are like... It, it, at six years old, should I let my son play in the front yard alone? Yeah. Uh, back then, you let him go into a cave. And not a lot of people know that Home Alone was actually based on Hole Alone. That's the right. The story of a six-year-old who gets lost in a cave right. and then thwarts two uh, gold-digging uh, dwellers. dwellers. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when he was 10, he dropped out of school and... With a uh, limestone bandit! <laughs> His plan at that point was to just uh, go into caves and look for Native American relics that were in there. So they It's quite an ambitious job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he would find arrowheads and stuff like that and then take them out and sell them to tourists. Great. Just, so that's just a, making a living. Yeah, sure. Working for a at, living. At 10. That's where you could find a job. That's yeah. his job. Yeah. Normal. By 12, he had, a, uh, he had memorized a, a nearby cave that was huge, and then he started checking out other unknown caves around the area. Okay, so he's the cave boy. So the caves aren't. The caves are fucking huge. Yeah, these caves are sometimes they're miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're massive, yeah. and yeah, and especially these ones here. All right, so this this twelve year old is just going caving. Yeah, gone caving. Normal. So he's finding um, moccasins, tomahawks, beads, sometimes the bodies of other explorers who it didn't work out for. Interesting. Um, in 1910, a New York geologist paid him. To work as a guide in local caves while he was, uh, you know, mapping them or whatever for two years. Okay. During this time, the geologist taught Floyd the basics of geology. Right. So he's becoming a learned man. Sure. A learned. A learned, learned, learned man. Learned. L not learned, no. Floyd became convinced all caves in the area were connected. Okay. So he thinks every single cave in Kentucky is connected to yeah. another. Does, he, does this end with him finding El Chapo? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> He was soon squeezing through cracks uh, that other explorers were absolutely terrified to go. Through. My boy, there's no way I could fit in a crack that time. No. He became known as Kentucky's best caver. So he gets a rep. Uh, you mean so he gets an agent? Yeah, he got. Uh, so this is oh, actually. That's his headshot? Yeah, that's actually like he shot him that a magazine came and took because he's getting so popular that people are like, what are you doing down there? Okay. And there he's getting some bones and whatnot that are in the cave. Okay. Um. People started telling stories of Floyd going into uh, caves and coming out miles away, popping his head out in some random owner's hayfield. Okay, like a so gopher. He's, right, just so like a little whack-a-mole. Right, yeah. yeah, so he's like a Bugs Bunny at the beginning of the cartoon yeah. where he's like, I should have gone left at Poughkeepsie. Uh, okay. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, that's so that's him. So. Um, okay, so he's a real cave boy. He's a cave boy. In 1917, Floyd discovered an amazing underground cavern with vertical walls, a smooth ceiling, and tons of white, orange, and brown formations. He thought it would make his family rich. He named it Crystal Cave and started promoting it to tourists. 
Okay, and it it, it would be it's just people so, come and look at the cave, right? But it's so remarkable because it's it just, just looked different awesome. colors. Okay, yeah, I mean just the way it was huge. First sure. of all, it was huge on the inside, but also the, all the colors. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, no one came though. Interesting, because there's other caves around. Okay, free caves. Oh, no, they're char- they, everyone charges to get everyone's into their charging. Cave. Everyone's the got their cave. They charge people to get in. It's okay. a whole. It's a racket. Okay. People would go. Uh, you take a you take a family trip down to the cave area. And sure. You, Check out caves. Yeah, go and Griswold it down a cave. That's right. Right. It, it could only be reached by taking a very rough wagon trail. Uh, so he bought a taxi to drive tourists out, but it turns out he was a terrible driver. He once actually drove into the broadside of a barn. Okay. Wow. That's uh, not, so that's bad. Yeah, he's that's hard. He's not great. That, I mean, you should be able to see that coming, I think. Is the a point. barn? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, other, other cave, so other cave owners don't want him to become successful, right? Right. Because okay. they're competing cave businesses. Sure. So they would tell tourists his cave was closed or block the road with boulders and wagons. Not even a cave. Yeah, no cave out there. It's above land. Look like a cave out there. No cave. There's no cave. It's trees and stuff. Yeah. Then five goons demanded Floyd hand over the lease to his cave. Hey, uh, we don't want to make it too difficult on you, but uh, give us the, the, the lease and the deed to your cave. <laughs> okay? Uh, there's, no, there's, there's no. Give me the paperwork that says that you own that cave. Ah, uh, first of all, I don't have it. Also, hey, uh, we wouldn't want you to fall backwards onto some of those stalactites. I just, you know that? Yes. Are you sure those are the ones that come up, or do you think they're the ones that go down? I can never remember. I, hold on. Well, let me think. What did the teacher say? What she said was stalactite. Hold on, touch. So I think your point is actually well taken. I would not push you back onto those stalagmites. Yeah, because yeah. might now, now you're might actually, hit you in the ass. Now you're actually wrong. I was right the first time. Look, we're going to kill you unless okay. you give me the lease. Okay, that's fair. Uh, so they beat the living shit out of him. Um, they beat him so bloody. Uh, his brother had to come out and chase them off with his shotgun. His okay. brother Homer. He's got a brother Homer just to make sure. this Sure. Make it perfect and normal. <laughs> right. Just a normal Homer. So Floyd keeps on going. He's still... Uh, he's so he's still... not intimidated by the cave beating. That's right. That's Floyd. Okay. He's not intimidated. That that picture looks like when someone estimates what someone will look like when they're older and they've gone missing. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay. Do he always wear his hat sideways? Yeah, it's a, he looks like Steve Coogan if he was stung by a wasp. <laughs> On half his face. On half of him. Uh, he wanted to find a cave that would blow away the competition and save his family from all their debt problems. So when he was 37, he found a narrow passageway. And he so spent, he's, his whole life is cave. He's, he, ju- he just thinks that he can find the right cave. The perfect cave. Then the family's out of debt, no problems. Everyone's going to live happily. It's, it's a, like a strike it rich. It's like gold for sure. gold or, or creating a startup in Silicon Valley. It's sure. all that yeah, yeah. stupid bullshit that people do. Uh, right, okay. Dog app. You can make a dog app. It tells you what to put on the This is where it, how, water. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that's what happens. My, his brother my idea. I got, an idea. I got an idea for a dog app, and, and when your dog needs to eat, it tells you. It goes, beep, beep, let's eat. Um. When your dog, how about this? I've got an app for you. Mm-hmm. It's called Dog, mm-hmm. and your dog tells you when it's hungry. Oh, and, and the it's dog, not an app. Oh. Yeah. I'm, I don't know how we make money off that. I yeah, honest. right. That's my point. Okay. Yeah. Well, let, uh, thanks for coming in. You're welcome. Um, so uh, he's 37. He finds this narrow passageway, which I will show you. I think this has been cleared out a little bit. That's what it looks like today. Oh, okay. But um, so. I think it was much, much smaller. I think at this point, uh, there's nothing there but a tiny hole. Yeah. No, it's hard to tell. Um, he spent 12 hours a day clearing away gravel and stones My God, for what? weeks. What? For weeks. So he's just going in this little hole and he's clearing out because he knows he's going to hit a cave at some point, a big cavern. On Monday, January 30th, 1925, he walked through the melting snow and headed in, into the cave. It was uh, warm for the winter. The entry was now a manhole size. He had a kerosene lamp slung over his shoulder. Five yards down, he lowers himself into a four-foot drop, and then he crawled on his belly under jagged rocks. After 50 feet, squeezed through a tight area by exhaling and pushing his body forward with his toes. <laughs> <laughs> That was just a horrifying sigh from Aaron. Aaron does not like caves. I figured that out. I just figured that out. He crawls for a while, and then he had to wiggle through another tight area. And then he was in a pit. He went down 10 feet into another hole, and he went through and came out on a ledge that was above a 60-foot room. Okay. So he found a room. All right. This is this is the day he discovers this room? Yeah. So he's just finished. Okay. He just found a fucking giant 60-foot room. Right. Okay. So he finds a big room. Then his lantern starts to die. 
Okay. So he turns back, but then he knocks over his lantern. Oh, no. So now it's pitch black. Oh, boy. He doesn't panic because he's been in the situation before. Sure. He's fucking Floyd Collins. Yeah. He's dealt with lights out. He's not Homer. Yeah. He knows how to handle lights out cave. Not his first time. Goes back through the bottom of the 10 foot pit uh, and lunges, but his foot was against. So he he gets in this area and he's going to push himself forward, right? Okay. But he puts his foot against a rock and that rock is not solid. So he pushes. And uh, a ton of gravel falls around his legs and his waist. Oh, no. So he can't move. So he's buried. He Aaron's can't move. Aaron's not doing too well over there. Yeah, this is, this is welcome to Aaron's worst nightmare. Okay, so he is now, he's basically like quicksanded himself in the cave. Yeah, he's, he, like all this rubble falls on him. So he can't, um, oh, I should, here's a picture of him. I didn't show this. This is like an action shot that they took of him. What? Like a, a photographer came and like, let's get you in a cave. So that's like a cave. It looks like it. Hello. <laughs> so, um, so this is how he is stuck. It's not that great, but um, so that's him. Be laying, oh, he grew lying a beard. down. Yeah, he's got a beard. He's laying down there. Um, okay. All oh that, wow. All that stuff is falling. Oh, so he's so really. He's, he's basically the only thing that's out is like his chest up, and sure. other than that, he's just covered. Right. Okay. And he can't move because there's a big rock on his leg. Right. His oh left, man. His left leg. Okay. <laughs> Again, another another upsetting noise from Aaron. Um, so, uh, whenever he moves or struggles, more rocks fall. He clawed at the walls until his fingernails were bloody. Uh, finally exhausted, he passed out. And when he woke, he just started screaming. Um, that's the best way to wake up. Yeah. 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 Just Just to wake up and go right in the full scream. Just, so this is a pattern. He sleeps, he wakes, he screams, he falls asleep. He wakes, he, he sleeps, he wakes, he screams, he sleeps, he wakes, he screams hours of this loses his voice. That's the end. Oh, man. What a good one. <laughs> his arms go numb because his arms are buried underneath him. So wait, when he was leaving there, he oh, was no, like... One's on top and one's on the bottom. Okay. That's how it is. So one, yeah. So one's stuck on, underneath him and one's stuck above him, but he can't move either one. Oh, God. Um, so uh, the pain is shooting from his ankle, which is injured. Now the melting snow water is happening, and so because oh, sweet water, because of where his face is, water is dripping down directly onto his face. So he's just like, oh, sweet, yes. <laughs> he's just opening his mouth and filling it like a bird bath. I mean, the good thing uh, is the good thing is water. The bad thing is that's Chinese water torture. Like that's yeah, a but not if you open your mouth. Torture. Not if you open your mouth. Yeah, yeah, okay. Fair. Normally it's just the head yeah. that's getting a good. I mean, and if you think about it, at that rate, he can probably get a full sip every two hours if he yeah. plays his cards right, which is nice. Yeah. Yeah. So now 25 hours go by. Jesus. Time and to picture James Franco playing. And, <laughs> and now no one, up, no one up top has been worried until now because they're used to Floyd going out and going, I'm going spelunking. And right. then, and then he'll, he'll come out of a cave somewhere and be like, hey, Jimmy, can I stay with you? And they're like, yeah, sleep right. in the barn or whatever. So. They're used to him being gone for a long time, but then after after like thirty hours, I think it it was at this they start to go. Oh, Floyd's not around, and they start Weird. talking. Did Floyd stay at your place right. last night? Nope, nope, nope. And then the seventeen year old kid goes out looking for Floyd, and uh, he finds the hole and he he worms down into the cave, but he couldn't get anywhere close because he could not do what Floyd. He could couldn't. Do. No, Floyd's the best. Floyd's the best caver in the area. That's what Floyd went through. To oh get, my to get God. down there. That looks like a, so a maze at a restaurant they give your kid. That's the top. So he went that and he went all the way down, across, back up. Jesus. Yeah, it's a shit show. So the kid yells his name and Floyd yells back, Come to me, I'm hung up. I'm hung up. And the kid's like, Can I do? And the kid ran out to get help. So one by one, men start coming and they try to get in. Go, each one wants to be the hero, go in the cave and reach Floyd, but they can't get anywhere fucking close. Oh no my one God. can do Everyone's like, Jesus Christ. Okay. So they would fail, they'd come out, they'd be soaked in mud, saying they would never go down in that hellish hole again. So by mid-afternoon, dozens of locals are gathered at the hole. When Floyd's 22-year-old brother, Homer, arrives... Hey! Men, should I shoot at something? <laughs> men are outside the cave arguing. Um, I do have a picture of Floyd. Homer. No, I don't want that Homer. There's an up, up there. Wasn't that Homer? That guy? Down. Oh, no. There you go. Uh, yeah, I don't want to show that one yet. Uh. Okay. So um, 
So Homer goes into the cave. Men are arguing outside. He goes straight in. He just walks by everybody arguing, trying to figure out what to do. Okay. The cave smells like cigarettes and alcohol from all the guys who've gone in before him. Oh, so those gentlemen, while they're going down there to save this man, are also having a drink to smoke. Also, I might want to drink before I went in the cave, if I think about it. <laughs> I or drink while I'm in the cave. Yeah, no, for sure. Definitely get down there. All right, I'm 10 feet down. It's going also, to have a whiskey and a Pall Mall. I don't know if it's whiskey. This is also moonshine territory. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, Homer... Gets Everybody you. in the 1800s was like the beginning of a Prilosec commercial. <laughs> Pounding like turkey legs and just bath booze. I don't, I don't know. I don't know at what point this happened, but to get through. Oh, there's Homer. I don't know which one he is. I think he's this one right here. Uh, my guess is he's that one. The one that looks absolutely terrifying. I used to blink, but then I stopped. <laughs> so he takes off. He gets in the cave ways and then to get through the skinny places. He takes off his pants, shirt, and shoes and slithers through in his underwear. <laughs> I'm coming, brother, naked. It's going to be weird when I get there. It's super weird. All right, brother, I'm scraped up and hard and naked. <laughs> Give me your hand. Do you want some moonshine and a smoke? I don't want nothing from leave? you, Homer. Here we go. You ruined Caven. Come on, take your clothes off. We're going to be naked heroes. I'm not going to take my clothes off. Get out of here, Homer. I look foolish if you're clothed and I ain't. <laughs> yeah. Well, that ain't not, that ain't right at all, Floyd. What you're doing ain't right. All right, I'll tell you what. I'm going to put on a glove. Then I won't be naked. Now, What's come matter? on. What's the matter with you? you? I'm drunk. I've been trying to get down here for a while. <laughs> I drink a lot of shine. I ain't blinked in years. So when Homer gets to the 10-foot pit, right, that's this area, he realized the horror of the situation. So he's there. Oh, no. Above. Right. Um, if one went into the chute headfirst... He'd have to work upside down, and to get out, he'd have to go impossible. feet first, yeah. and that's 20 feet before yeah. he can turn around. So yeah. it's 20 feet up. Sure. So, uh, but if, if you, you go feet first, feet what are you first, really doing? Then you, right, so you'd have to contort yourself into almost impossible positions to get down to reach him, right? right? So that's what Homer did. He went down feet first, oh. and, and he calls for someone to bring down, bring down food, <laughs> and then someone else comes in, and, uh, and then Homer fled fed Floyd by hand um, nine sausage sandwiches and a pint of coffee. Poured the coffee down his throat. Jesus he can't look where he is. Christ. He's also flat, kind so, of. So, wow. So he ate a lot. He was hungry. Nine hours. sausage sandwiches. I imagine they weren't that big. I maybe do one more. <laughs> Jesus, Floyd, you <laughs> hungry. Oh, shit, how long you been down there? Maybe a pot of coffee, too. A <laughs> uh, little men, more sugar. So more men go down uh and, and fail. Oh, wait, did I skip? Okay, uh, sorry. Homer comes out, um, tries to, he tries tries to remove rocks from around Floyd. He can't. They're just too okay. fucking packed in But he's him. he's feet first? or he's Yeah, so he's feet first. So he's like crouched down in that little so pocket. So how's he feeding? There. When he's feeding well, he's him, he's just, feeding him with his, oh, he's just like between his yeah, nude between legs, his legs, dropping sausage biscuits Basically, into his open mouth? it's a beautiful mouth. picture, but that's what you painted, but that's what's happening. Jesus. Feet on the, each side of his it's head. A, it's, it, it's basically called outhousing. It's where I squat naked and drop food into his hole. You can actually online they have Floyd porn, and that's what it is. Just that's a guy dropping right. food into his brother's mouth. Oh, man. In a cave. Look at that. He loves pizza. Man, look at them sausages going in that mouth. He <laughs> loves bagel bites. Um, so he can't get them out. And, and, and when he tries to pull rocks out, more fall in. It's just a fucking shit Jeez. show. So he decides to bail, and, uh, and he goes back up top because he's, he's exhausted. He, well, I will say... Having nine sausage sandwiches is probably well. I mean, there's the upside being like there's now some something's going through your body. Yeah. The downside is it's you know probably you're probably gonna have to go potty soon. Yeah. So Floyd comes out. That's what he looks like when he comes out. <laughs> what they get it? Oh, that's Floyd, right? No, that's Homer. That's Floyd right there. Oh, so they I do. Mean, get sorry, him. that's Homer. Oh, sorry. that's Homer. Okay, yeah. That guy. I don't know who that Homer guy is. Homer looks like a beat up clown. Yeah, he had a rough time down there. Um, because it's brutal for these guys to do these moves to get down and get back up. It's a fucking unbelievable for these guys. Mm -hmm. For for Floyd, it was no no issue. Uh, he came out of the hole uh, hours later. He's shivering violently. Skin was dangling from his fingers. Uh. So he takes a break. More men go down, fail. They can't get near him. Nobody could reach him. Homer went back down at midnight. For eight hours, Homer hacked at the rocks around Floyd with a crowbar. No luck. He came up at sunrise. His arms and back ached. His lungs burned. There were now tons of strange people up top. It smelled like moonshine, 
Floyd had been trapped for 48 hours. So they've just turned it into sort of a music festival out well, there? Well, everyone, they're just sitting out there, so they might as well drink and stay warm and whatnot. Right, drink and stay warm. Um, yeah, that's what I would do. So he, he, so it's, 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 it's a fucking mess. And we're on, I mean, we're what, like three days in now? We're 48 hours 48 in. So hours he's been in. down there for 48 hours. Um, and, no, not that. So they're, so they're starting to set stuff up and, res- oh. and try to rescue him. They're doing a real dig. Yeah, they're starting to dig and, and do different things. Um, they haven't started a real dig yet, but they're starting to like open, trying to open up the hole and open up spaces inside. Sure. At least do. create some sort of shoot for the sausage sandwiches All to right, slide nah, it down just got into bad. his mouth. It just got bad really fast. Um, new men had ideas. The new men arrived. One said Floyd should untie his shoes. Smart. Smart. So that guy understands the situation <laughs> and knows how to fix it. The other guy <laughs> comes yeah. over with an idea, a plan. So hey, hey, boys. Yeah? No, I just got here, but I was thinking. I was in my home. I heard about this. Came down. Y'all tried untying his shoes. Well, problem is, if we was fixing to untie his shoes, his head and his torso and the rocks are in the way, so we can't get to his feet. But if you can, I gotta recommend. Now, fella, I gotta. You untie the shoes. Uh, fella, let me just jump in here. Mm-hmm. That's an impossibility unless we came from the other side, which we would not know how to do. All right. No, it's not an all right is not an answer to this. Just wondering if they might be double knotted, that's all. He can't get to them. Maybe because they're double knotted. We can't get to them. All right. Well, I'm going to go back home, boys. Please do. Remember the two, Remember the shoe thing I talked about? We won't. Another said send a contortionist down with a mallet and chisel. Now y'all are sounding <laughs> crazy. I heard about every crazy idea that's imaginable. Another said use dynamite. Now for the last <laughs> time... The way to fix this problem is to blow Floyd up. That's right. We want to blow the hole so no one can get out or in. Now, for the last time, we need the contortionist from Ocean's Eleven to get down there. He's the only one who can fit into that hole. Someone said they should amputate the foot and see if he can make it out before he bled out. <laughs> okay, so a so real guy, fun sort of that guy snail wanted, tail race against time. Yeah, that guy wanted like a clock situation happening. Oh. Um, I say we cut him in half and raise them separately. <laughs> <laughs> Homer asked some teenagers to bring uh, Floyd down some blankets oh, boy. and food and drinks. Okay. And they uh, went in. They couldn't make it anywhere near down. And they just stuffed all the food, drinks, and blankets into cracks in the cave and left. He was real happy, mister. Grown, grown men did the same thing. And they all lied and said that he had given food to him. Oh, shit. So he's just like, please? Yeah. Homer's the only one who'll feed him. That's right. A reporter ap- approached Homer. And Homer said... Quote, if you want information, there's a hole right over there. You can donut, go down and find out yourself. Now, the reporter's name is Skeets. <laughs> oh, uh, if there's any reporter that sounds like he'll go down a hole, it's one named Skeets. Skeets Miller. Whoa. So uh, he's been down now. He's been down in the hole uh, for it's like 50 hours. So the porter's name, uh, William B. Miller, known as Skeets. He's 21. He put on coveralls and headed in. He's skinny. He's 117 pounds. So he, this reporter was like, all right. Yep. He's never he's never caved. He's not a caver. He's scared. He crawls in. He squeezes all the way through because he's so skinny. Floyd, eyewitness news. Hello. What's your, what's your favorite kind of food? Have you tried untying your shoes? <laughs> Inquiring so, minds want to know. At the last tight spot, Skeets called for Floyd and heard a groan. Uh, oh, oh, sausage. So Skeets slid down the 10 foot uh, pit and landed on Floyd's head. Oh, good. That's what he needed yeah. was a concussion. A 20 foot funk. Yeah, no, for sure. Uh, Skeets apologized. This is like the Goonies. <laughs> He goes back up and carefully slid back down so he would not be on top of Floyd's head. Oh, cool. But Floyd is completely incoherent at this point. Uh, why? I don't know. Okay. Lazy? Yeah. Skeets uh, headed back out. Floyd had now been trapped for 73 hours. Well, I kicked his head real good. <laughs> He's all right. He's hungry, and I kicked his head hard. He made some moaning. <laughs> He's not good. Uh, so he's hallucinating. He's seeing angels wrapped in white linens riding blazing chariots. He's I think that means you're close. 
Yeah, he smells liver and onions, freshly frothed cow's milk, and chicken sandwiches. So he's just smelling an afterlife potluck. He, yeah, he. It's mo- it's now Monday, February second. I down. I don't want to live. I gotta go eat potluck with That's the angels. Right. He went down on Friday. Lieutenant okay, so Robert if- Burden, a 33 year old Louisville firefighter, arrived. He was confident and very arrogant. He was also super skinny. In he went. When he reached Floyd, he said, quote, You got a hell of a problem here, but I think we can get you out with a rope. Okay. like that idea. Floyd said, okay. Yeah. Let's do this. Burden then looked more, sized up the whole area, and said, quote, Might have to pull your foot off. Uh, off? Off? Off. Off. Might have to take that foot off. Take the foot off. Yeah. Well, so we'll, that was another guy's well, plan pull, earlier. Pull, pull, not take her off. Pull her off. Pull the foot off. Yeah, with the rope. Right, not when, remove. When we pull the rope, we're thinking, uh, baby, will come right off. Right, okay. So have the foot torn off. Yeah, I'm right. a fireman. Okay. Yep. Right. Uh, Floyd didn't care. He said, uh, quote, pull my foot off, get me out. Wow. He's tired of it. It's yeah. 72, sure. 72 hours. Sure, now. yeah. Uh, Burden may not have known Floyd had lost his mind earlier that day and was hallucinating. Anyway, he thought he got approval. He goes up. Oh, no. He tells everyone Floyd had agreed to the rope pulling plan. Okay. The crowd did not approve. Everyone, the locals are all like, that That doesn't sound, that sounds like medieval, like fucked up. You sound like a crazy Louisville man. Try taking his shoes off. Take it, untie the show. Shoes! <laughs> I just say that and run away <laughs> now. getting dragged out of the place. Uh, so they said it would break his foot or if it didn't pull off, like it would be a disaster. So a doctor in the crowd said the rope pull would stretch Floyd's internal organs like taffy. So there's a lot of, so the doctor's good. There's a lot of against. And the doctor understands what's going on. Yeah. He's like, don't that'll gentlemen intestines are taffy. Yeah. So he's a weird one. Yeah. He was also like, well, we pull them apart. We'll be eating taffy for weeks. He has taffy, and as every man knows, and as any man of science knows, we're all filled with different candies. Well, let me show you, boys. <laughs> oh, God, it's not taffy. Now, if we're not careful, we might strike the now and later, and then the Skittles will be everywhere. Uh, Burton says, look, there's no other option. I've been down there. All we can do is pull him with a rope. The locals had no response to this. They had no ideas. So everyone agrees reluctantly. Okay. Let's pull him out with a rope. Okay. So let's... at 5 p.m., a body harness was brought down. Put around him. Homer, Skeets, and Burden went in with a 100-foot rope. And when they got to Floyd, Homer gave him ham sandwiches, coffee, and whiskey. Okay, sure. That's great. Then Floyd said he didn't actually want to have his foot pulled off. Okay. So now he's had some food, and he's like, wait, wait, wait well, what the on. hell are we doing? Uh, <laughs> this is a bad idea. Yeah. Oh, wait. Uh, I have a thing that uh, I like my foot. Well, uh, we're not as worried about the foot, but the doctor pointed out your taffy might get everywhere. Oh, good God. So so now he's come to, and he's like... Let's not do this. Right. So Homer slipped him a sedative, probably in some food. Sure. Knock him out. Okay. Quote, to build up his vitality to stand the shock if we did pull off his foot. It, it, yeah, uh-huh. That's what it does. It really heightens the experience. <sighs> Homer tied the harness around and tie, uh, put the harness around and tied the rope. Skeets was crouched at the top of the pit. Burden is further up in the cave. Several other men helped near the cave's mouth. And on Homer's count, they all started pulling. Okay. And Floyd screamed. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh, shit. Damn it. Okay, so he's just in horrid pain. So it turns out he's lying face up. Right. In a ho- in a horizontal horizontally face up. Yeah, he's laying like he's in a coffin. Lower, his, well, sort of. His lower body trapped, and his back is kind of turned into an L. His back. Okay, so his his spine is sort of tilted. You mean? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, down. Like it's it's like his time is like that. It's like angled. Okay, right? so it's a lot harder to pull him out. So not in other that, words, are they now great. talking about m- maybe, maybe taking off the bottom half? Right, of right, right, right. <laughs> so from the the belly button below, sort of. Uh, so well, I'm going to um, need to give him another knockout ham sandwich. So the, he just started screaming, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. And everyone could hear all the way through the cave, uh, which they've now, they've now named the sand cave. Um, yeah. So Homer started pulling in the opposite direction. And, uh, as everyone does, he starts pulling the other way sure. back towards everyone else. And, uh, he had enough strength to pull it from the other men's hands. Okay. So Homer does like a feat of strength thing. Floyd does. 
Homer. Oh, it's Homer doing it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it's over. Uh, okay. Didn't go well. Bad plan. They head back out to reevaluate. They're like, we can't pull him. He screams and right. he might get torn in half. Right. Jesus. Um, they're all very particular. They're all pretty freaked out by what had happened. Sure. Uh, Burden, uh, the fireman, fainted as he got near the exit. Okay. His idea. He faints. Right. Um, the crowd outside is getting larger. It has been 88 hours. Oh, my God. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, then came Floyd's childhood friend, Johnny Gerald. Johnny Gerald. When Johnny had first heard that Floyd was stuck in a cave, he shrugged and kept on chaperoning the local high school Boy Scouts, boys, boy, ba- boys basketball team that night. So okay. he's chaperoning the basketball team. Uh, he's not worried at all. He'd explored caves with Floyd all of his childhood, and if anyone could get out, Floyd could get out. But after two days, he started to worry, and he headed for the cave. And when he arrived, there were around 200 people, mostly shit-faced, Hardly any with caving experience. And Johnny was really disgusted by the idea of trying to pull Floyd out. Right. He's a basketball coach. So he's like, run the triangle offense. I don't know if he's a coach or if he just like... Hangs out. Makes sure they don't get in trouble. Sure. Kind of deal. Because you know basketball players. Yeah. You know, they like to do their thing. Yeah, for sure. What? Um, so, uh, so So he... He goes down. Okay. He's a... He's... He cannot believe all the the bottles and the clothes and the shit crammed in cracks. Yeah, it's like a six flag like at night just, now. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, we could open a store down here. Quote, yeah. enough sandwiches in the cave to feed the whole crowd. There's a vendor? <laughs> How you doing, sir? Turkey legs. <laughs> now, Floyd was thrilled when he heard Johnny was coming down. <laughs> I mean, imagine, like, commuting. Hey, Floyd, make the place look nice. You got a visitor, too. <laughs> One of your old friends is coming down. Close your eyes. Oh, thank you. Quote, let him down here. He'll get me out. <laughs> oh, oh, man, he's got to be just out of his mind. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who's coming. 88 hours. Let him, let bring him on down. He'll fix this. But Johnny was stocky. He could not fit down the 10-foot pit. So he pulled rocks away until he was able to slink down around midnight. Then he started removing the gravel around Floyd. He spent the next six hours trying to enlarge the area. Floyd's torso appeared, and then his hips and then his upper thigh. Sorry, this great plan was to dig the gravel out from around him? Well, he, but that's the first thing you have to do before you do anything yeah, else to get him out. but you why have has to... nobody else done this? I don't know. That I, would be like the first thing you would think, try to I th- do. I think Johnny has a lot of caving experience. Okay. So maybe he's just like, yeah, you get out the rocks before you do the before thing. Before you rip the man in half. Nobody else knows. Okay. So he's, he's pulling out uh, all the rocks. Um, So he's down, let's see, his hips, then his upper thigh. So he's all the way down to his upper thigh. And for the first time, Floyd could wiggle his right leg as as painful as that is. Oh, my God, the atrophy. And he could also move his arms and his hands. This is good. So now he can finally eat the sedatives on his own. Yeah, Yeah. that's right. Uh, But Johnny was too big to reach past Floyd's knees. uh, But he'd, he'd moved about a half ton of rock at that point. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty fucking amazing. Yeah. So before he goes up, Floyd told him, quote, not to let anyone come down here, down there, but him and his party. So he's like, just you, Johnny, yeah, right. and your party. VIP. Nobody else. Yeah, your VIPs boys. Only. Johnny agreed, thinking outsiders could cause a cave in. So he's worried about people coming into the cave who don't know anything about caves. Right. Um, when he got back to the surface, he was approached by a group of professional stone cutters. Okay. They don't fucking do anything. They're like guys who work on jewelry. They're fucking, st- I don't know. I mean, maybe they cut bigger stones, but yeah. they wanted to chisel the limestone above Floyd's head, and Johnny told him to get the fuck out. Yeah, okay. They will want to cut the part off above his head, and then what happens? Well, the rock falls down on his head. But then you've got his feet. Yeah. Hopefully. And we get them out. Ideally. So uh, Then we can finally take his shoes off, get him out of there. So the fireman, Lieutenant Burden, comes back at 10 a.m., and he has a great idea. He says they should try to pull him out with a rope again. Yeah, that's smart. <laughs> that's good. That was that was close last time. But I mean, in a way, he's looser, right? Like, is it is it now time he to? Just, he's just cruising. He goes, "You guys, I had I've a eureka thinking, moment. Been thinking all night long. Got a great idea. All right, let's pull him out. All right, great. How? Well, do the same thing. Put a rope around. Nah, pull, pull, we tried pull, that plan. He almost pull. ripped it in half. Yeah, but this time it'll be different. I'm not going to do that. Uh, so this time when he he said that idea, when Everyone shouted, fuck you, Adam, and he and that was it. <laughs> okay, so he had a good run. Yeah. Uh, so now Floyd is a uh, blurb in newspapers across the country. God. This is because Skeets had written a story. Right. Floyd had been trapped now for 103 hours. Oh, my God. 
So Skeets goes back to the cave. Sure, for the follow-up. Oh, I already did that, Skeets. Here's another Skeets. So Skeets goes back to the cave. Whoa, hello, Skeets. Yeah, he's not fucking kidding around. I got some ladies. I've got Skeets with the deets at 11. Um, so the idea was to set up a chain of men who would pass food, equipment, and rocks up and down the passageway while reinforcing it with boards. Okay. So you got guys moving rocks out at the same time they're taking sure. boards and so putting them against the side of the cave. Okay. To so you're essentially it. building a mine. You're building a mine. Light bulbs be set up throughout the cave. Whoa. So so they did that. So now there's like an orange glow throughout the cave. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Skeets uh, would then go down and try to remove rocks and gravel from around Floyd. The hole around Floyd's torso had now had five inches of clearance. Okay. So that's pretty good, yeah, right? That's great. Skeets could prop his legs past Floyd's head and wiggle hip deep in. In this weird position, he would paw past Floyd's knee. So he's, so he's probably laying crotch on top of him. Right. Oh, okay. Because he went feet first. Right, okay. To get in deep enough to then dig. I don't know how this works. It's almost like spelunking 69ing. It's, now it's a sex cave. Okay, so but he is essentially... He's going over him. He's over him. He's on top of him. He's laying on him. This is hot. And he's digging past the knees. He's able to reach past the knee. So for two hours, Skeets passed up buckets of dirt and rocks. And Floyd, start, Floyd starts to talk. Quote, I believe I would go to heaven, but I can feel that I am to be taken out alive and with both my feet. Four days down here and no nearer to freedom than I was the first day. How will it end? How will I get out or... I couldn't think of it. I have faced death before. It doesn't frighten me, but it is so long. Oh, God, be merciful. I want you to tell everybody outside that I love every one of them, and I'm happy because so many are trying to help me. Tell them I'm not going to give up. I'm going to fight and be patient and never forget them. You go out now, but don't don't leave me too long. I want you uh -oh. with me, Oh no! and I'll keep helping all I can, can to move some of this rock. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So Skeets goes back out. So Floyd's doing well. Yeah, yeah. He's keeping it together. Yeah. He writes up, he writes up what he said in his story. He writes up what happened in this trip. Uh, and so now Floyd is a nationwide event. Of course. Front page headlines. Of course. It's bound to happen. Yeah. Um, Skeets also wrote about his own feelings of fear. So, so normally at this time, reporters are not supposed to ever put their feelings into something. But Skeets did. Right. He he didn't do the weird. And then they did this and this. He like put how scary it was right. and all that shit in there. So everyone's like reading it and they're totally on edge and into the story. Playhouses around the country would be interrupted during the show to update audiences. I'm sorry, everybody. Uh, we all know how Macbeth ends, so we're going to take a quick time out. <laughs> Floyd has had his eighth sausage biscuit. And uh, he believes that he saw the devil. All right. As you are. That's Floyd. So, oh boy. Yeah, he's, he was dapper before he went down there. In D.C., President Coolidge followed the story closely. Congress stopped debates to find out what was going on. Now, hold on. Uh, I yield. I yield to the news boy. I yield to the news of the caveman. Go ahead, news boy. Yell something. Well, he's fixing to leave still. All right, that was great. Sorry, I shouldn't have come in. Get out of here. All right. Uh, Floyd got an offer of $350 a week to star in a vaudeville show. <laughs> <laughs> it might be premature, but I like the way he does things. Now, how's your tapping, Floyd, before we put the deal <laughs> together? Can you tap? Assuming you leave with both feet. I can tap with my nose. All right. And what about uh, monologues? Do you feel good about memorization? I don't want to die. All righty. And how do you feel about working with a female? Maybe we do something a little burlesque-y. Uh, you any, uh... I like to fuck. All right. Well, great, Floyd. We'll draw this up, and I think uh, we're going to love you. Assuming you make it out of here alive. What? Assuming you make it out of here alive, we can't wait to put together a show for vaudeville. Boy, a real razzmatazz. You'll see. He Remember that kid who fell down the well and lost his arm? Yeah. I'm the one who made him a na household name. Dead Tommy? That's right. Dead Tommy was nothing until <laughs> me. So I'm um, the one who suggested he bleed out. So now Skeet's got more and more determined to save. Floyd. He okay. wrote, quote, I believe I can save him yet. I know it in his last story. And he went back down. This time he planned to use a jack to lift the stones off Floyd's foot. Okay. 
But the team couldn't find the right size jack. Sure. So Skeets used one that was too small. And he piled wood blocks against the cave ceiling uh -huh. and grabbed the blocks with one hand while wrenching the jack with the other. So he basically made like a post right. in a way to hold on to. Okay. Reaches in with the jack with the other and he would loosen this rock that was on his foot, which would then move to the side and slip loose and go back down. Okay. So if he had had a bit of bigger jack, this might have worked. So he's also in a super awkward position because it just there's no room. So it's causing him tremendous pain in his abdominals, his back, his neck, his wrist, his you fingers. You can't bring that up down there, though. And his forearms, no. Boy, my that's... back is so sore. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's just, really? it, well, this, I, I mean, I understand yeah, what yeah, you're yeah, doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. My arm, too. Yeah. God. Ugh. You know what hurts on me? Well, I mean, oh! Oh, Floyd, I'm just saying. Oh, every, all the whole thing. I'm going to get Oh, a does your fucking back hurt? I'm going to get a massage tonight. I have to. I have had the shit since ate those 19 sausage sandwiches. Oh, by the way, you set a record. Most sausages eaten in a cave. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. There's a certificate oh waiting for God. you. Oh, my God. Yeah, This is such a great day. It's huge. Oh, shit. It's been 120 hours. I don't want to die. <laughs> um, so this goes on, I mean, for a while. He tries again. The rock lurches. Floyd yells, keep turning, fella. It's coming off. With each turn, the stone shifts and falls. Then he goes back on his foot. Skeet tries again and again and again. He moves around, he tries different angles, he tries every little angle in the whole fucking space. But what he really needed was the third hand. He didn't have one. So he finally collapses from exhaustion. Bur Burden was there. Quote, we all felt like sitting down right there and crying. It was awful. Am I crazy S to suggest wrapping a rope around the guy? <laughs> <laughs> Skeets then adjusted Floyd's covers and put a light bulb around his neck for warmth. Sleep well, Prince. And he left. Uh, Skeet's hands were purple and bruised. Up above, the National Guard had arrived. Okay, right on time. But Skeet's Miller was now a hero. The Courier Journal wrote, quote, Cave City, that's the nearby city. Right. Cave City is Skeet's crazy. In fact, if Cave City were a kingdom, Skeet's could be the reigning monarch without the slightest hint of revolt among his royal subjects. By the way, King Skeet's should be a rapper. Oh, yes. How is that not? King Skeets. What's up, King Skeets in the house? Skeets. Whatever, uh, whenever he left his hotel room, Taurus would swarm him. An informal bodyguard followed him around. <laughs> An informal bodyguard? Yeah, Meaning like a, guy, a gentleman a, who was a, just like, a guy I'll who goes, protect you. Yeah, that happened with uh, uh, the Bundys. Oh, in, right. In Nevada, dude. Right. Like, I'll be your bodyguard now. I'm dumb I'm big. Buddha. By yeah. the way, Buddha went to prison for being an idiot. Wow. At the cave... A new man took over. Henry Carmichael, the general superintendent of the Kentucky Rock Asphalt Company. Okay. Henry was appalled at the primitive rescue attempts. At 2.30 a.m. on Wednesday, Henry sent two men down to assess stability. Okay. So these guys are going down to check everything out. Uh, must be nice for Floyd to meet some more people. Now, the opening of the cave was now wider than ever because of that human chain, right? So they had the big fucking human chain of right. people. Who are, who are getting stuff out, that, like they're bringing out Jesus. tons of dirt. I like um, how they're all in suits. It's like you're going to go dig holes, and guys are like, well, I'll just wear my digging suit. Yeah, you got to dress up. Um, so as they go deeper, the cave actually gets tighter. Normally, Kentucky caves are very stable and, and are always 45 degrees. Okay. 50, sorry, 54 degrees. But this situation is different because the human chain had happened. Okay. So they had all those humans lined all the way up the top and all the way back down, which causes a cave to get warmer. Okay, so he's got a hot cave. So Skeets came up. Uh, wait. Right, so Ske Skeets came up with the idea for the human chain, which caused the cave temperature to fluctuate from all the bodies and all the campfires up above sure. are melting slow, snow into the cave. Okay. So it's hot and it's wet, wetter than it should be. Water's pouring into the tunnel. Large cracks start forming. Remember? Karst mm -hmm, topography. Mm -hmm. It is a limestone cave mm -hmm. or dolomite or whatever. The ceiling starts to droop. Oh, no. On a cave. One of the two uh, volunteers sent down. They got super close. They hear Floyd moaning as well as the rumble of sliding rocks. Oh, so that guy turns around. He doesn't, go, he doesn't go out, but he goes, I'm getting out of this area. Yeah. Good to meet you. Go get my bike. Um, the second volunteer, Casey Jones, kept going, and he got to the 10-foot pit, 
and he looked at Floyd. Um, he tried to ignore that there were pebbles falling around him. Don't worry, Floyd. This is fine. It just rained in rocks, my friend. Uh, Floyd begged Casey to come down. Quote, can't now, Floyd, but I will when I come back. Floyd said, quote, I'm thirsty. Of course you are. Please. Yep. I need water, buddy. All right. See you in a bit. Casey fell for it. He slid first down into the pit and handed Floyd some coffee. Drink up, buddy. You thirsty? Coffee. Here's some coffee. Oh, that's nice. Uh, um, By the way, you also want to be up as much as possible. You want when tea? Coffee? Yeah. Tea? What do you want? I'd love a latte. Um, a vanilla soy? I hate to be that guy. Caramel macchiato. <laughs> <laughs> Floyd didn't want the coffee. Casey realized Floyd wasn't thirsty. He just didn't want to be alone. Oh, so he was thirsty in a way. Casey's partner yelled, the guy, the first guy. Yeah, the guy, the smart guy. Let's call him smart. Yeah, he says, we need to get the fuck out of here. Okay, smart guy, earning the name. Casey put down the ladle and scrambled out. Oh, he's <clears> ladling <throat> coffee. Here you go, Floyd. As he looks back, he saw the passage close like a vice. No. Floyd still had the light bulb on his chest. Oh, and at shit. 4 a.m., 4 a.m. on Wednesday, uh, Feb uh, February 4th. I don't know. Put something else here. Um, it's hour 114. The walls clamped shut, and the K-Round Floyd went completely dark. Oh, shit. His muffled sobs could be heard oh. behind the rocks. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. It's just the worst. Oh, please don't leave me. Oh, just God. the fucking worst. Yeah. Well, plus with those tears, he'll be loosening some of the rocks. <laughs> And he's crying, stay with me. Oh, please don't leave. Please uh, don't leave. Oh, boy. All right, we got to get out of here. All right. So they go up. Uh, oh. In the morning, Skeets arrives with a torch. The plan is to burn away the rocks that block the way. Burn away the rocks that so block the way? So these are soluble rock. Like the, I don't know if it's possible to burn limestone, but it probably is. might take a long fucking time. Sure. But... Remember, water can dissolve these rocks. They're right, soluble. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. But I okay. mean, it takes a while for it's water to dissolve them. It's just an interesting tactic to be like, we're going to burn you out of here. But it's, I would imagine I imagine he had looked it up, and I, I would imagine limestone rocks or dolomite or whatever can be burned. If it worked, the jacking would be easy. But he was told the cave had closed shut. He couldn't believe it, and he went down himself to see. It was blocked. <laughs> Except that, it's weird. I went down there, and I heard the caves crying. <laughs> The cave, the rocks are crying. It's so weird. So weird. I'm going to sit right here and drink some coffee and listen to these crying rocks. All right. Shut up, rocks. Um, so he comes back out. When he comes out, his nose is, nose is bleeding. He's been down there. That one's a drill of time. Skeets tells Burton, quote, for God's sakes, do not go back down there. And see that Homer Collins doesn't go in again. So Skeets is giving up. He's okay. like, this shit is fucked. There's nothing that's going to happen. Oh, boy. But the person they needed to stop from going down was Floyd's childhood friend, Johnny. And Johnny was pissed. He had said all along not to put any people into the cave because it would heat the cave and cause it to change and collapse. Okay. And no one listened. So Skeets' idea... Skeets, the hero, had actually hurt the situation, caused it to be a right. fucking disaster. Right. So Johnny got a group together that evening. Quote, there's death down there. The walls and ceiling are crumbling. Unless you are determined to take the biggest chance you ever took in your life, tell me now and stay outside. Is that an Alex Jones quote? Yeah. Okay. That's the same speech that they did in Glenn Gary and Ross with Alex Baldwin. <laughs> right. Um, so he's saying this is a death run. Yeah. So some guys volunteer. Over the next eight hours, Johnny would enter and leave the cave five times, at least five times, maybe okay. more. What's he's, he doing down there? Uh, so he's sawing and chopping trees up top, shoring up the cave walls again. Underground, a crew was reinforcing cracks and wobbling boulders and removing rocks. Okay, so sort of preventative movement. And then taking out the ones they needed to get out of the way. Right. When they could hear each other, Johnny and... Uh, Johnny told Floyd there had been a breakdown and Floyd just started to cry. Okay. Seems like Floyd, Floyd's not handling this too well. Yeah, he's a chicken shit. Well, right? they always say that after five days in a cave, you start to go a little batty. Yeah. Um, 
I got that. Thanks. I'm not. I don't. I don't want you to think I didn't get it. I okay. got it. I know bats live in caves. Sure. Um. It's you know. It's a good bit. Yeah. <laughs> So Johnny surgically tried to remove the rocks. In a few hours, he could see light from the bowl around Floyd's neck. So he's cutting through the rocks. He's okay, getting through the something's rocks. happening. Then Johnny could squeeze through. So Johnny went to the service to get equipment and said Floyd would be up in an hour. Uh, that's quite a claim. He's I don't like, like, I'm that. digging him out. I'm digging like him that. out. It had now been 132 hours. Jesus Christ. Ugh. At 10.30 p.m., at 10.30 p.m. on Friday, February 4th, Johnny went in. He squeezed and crawled. He planned to use a grease gun to coat the rocks around Floyd's leg to get him out. So he had a fucking plan. Sure. Squeeze it. Squeeze it, grease it. Slide it out. Yeah, it's a three-step process. He used to do it with his lady. He can do it with Floyd. Wait. But when they got to the cave, there was no light shining through. The ceiling had collapsed once again. Ah. Uh. <clears throat> Johnny yelled for Floyd. A big rock fell and hit him on the head. Hit, hit Johnny on the yeah. head? Okay. Johnny heard a moan and, quote, I've done gone home and gone to bed. Oh, boy. Floyd was losing consciousness. Yeah. Johnny started to clear the passage, ignoring the pain from his head. He clawed at the stones. Then a sharp, heavy rock fell and hit him squarely on his back. Fifteen minutes later, Johnny came out and looked at the men. Quote, I would not go back in that darn place if they deed me the state of Kentucky. Well, funny you should say that, Sir! Johnny. Sir! You have driven a bargain that I cannot say no to. <laughs> the man with the sash. I'm the man with the mayor sash. Uh, have you noticed I have on this hat? Uh, I will uh, uh, draw the paperwork up. Big tall black hat. So, But Johnny really is like the guy who gives you hope. Johnny is the fucking hero. Of He's story. the light at the end of the tunnel. That is correct. I wish I had a picture of Johnny. I couldn't find one, though. So, Want to um, draw him or something? No. Okay. Um, so, uh, so now, uh, Lieutenant General H. H. Denhart of the National Guard said they were going to dig a shaft straight down to get him. Okay. So now they're fuck the cave, right? So they're they're going over to where he is, which looks like it's like <laughs> 60, 70 feet, maybe, and then they're going to dig straight down. Because you can't see this, but basically Floyd so has crawled. Floyd has crawled into a hole, and then down, and then sideways, and he's sixty feet deep. Basically. So his plan is to dig sixty feet down Straight to down. him, like basically build a well and pull him out. Yeah, he's gonna dig a hole right. and pull okay. pull okay. him out. Manhole is what he's gonna dig. I'd rather it be a functioning water holder. It's gonna be a manhole, bro. Um, There's coffee in this <clears> well. So now the state has assumed control of the dig. The state's taken uh, over. No more in his private business. Denhart told Homer it would take, quote, men with brains to get Floyd out. That's why he was in charge. Yeah. You know what you guys needed? You guys needed an asshole. Yeah, I mean, seriously. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I'm the FBI agent <laughs> in Die Hard. <laughs> that's right. We're the president. Henry Carmichael was told to uh, lead the dig. Volunteers from the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, the Southern Signal Company, the U.S. Mines Rescue Team, and the engineers from the State Highway Commission pitched in. The local townspeople were told to sit this one out. But we was... Sit down, you dumb locals. We was fancy and a mob. The brain's here. Why do you think I wear this big hat? A lot of brain. He is smart. His hat sure is Would big. that be stupid if I was in charge of the National Guard? Well, I don't think in this country anybody who's idiotic will rise to the top of any situation. That's right. Now sit down. So you must be smart. Sit your shit down, you dumb local motherfucker. I like the way he talks to us. His rhetoric is something I respond to. So this caused resentment amongst the townspeople. Um, A geology professor came and explained that the best place to dig, uh, where the best place to dig was, but the locals said he was wrong. Yeah, shut him down. And they complained to the officials. Yeah. They said digging a shaft would take way too long. Even Skeets, who had once been full of optimism, was now completely full of despair. Tests soon proved what the locals knew, that the fancy heavy machinery they wanted to use could not be used because the cave basically inhales exhaust oh, from gas-powered so engines. So it's just going to die. So it would just suck the fumes in and right, kill Floyd. Right. So they realized that. And they realized they would have to dig the 55-foot shaft with picks and shovels. That's, I mean, but also fun, bonding, and it just takes a little longer. A couple more minutes, maybe. Hour 146. Oh, God. What? I mean, it's he... 
Thursday. He went down on Friday. Oh my god! I don't know how. I don't know what he's gonna tell his boss. Oh yeah, no, he's yeah. not gonna buy that. I I'm think sorry, you were where in a cave, and I got. Why kid. don't you say that to my face again? You you were in a cave. Yeah. You know what? You're demoted. You're on the grill. Oh, You're shit. on the grill. No. I don't need this shit. I went down a cave. I've been in a hole for five days. Fuck you, Floyd. I'm not in it's walking fucking condition. business I'm running. I know. Sorry, King of Burgers. Fucking hole liar. Uh, Harry, Harry, Henry Carmichael estimated it would take 30 hours to dig the shaft. Well, he's got it. Floyd's got the time. Yep. Had to clear the docket. Uh, by the evening, the, be- uh, the men started to slow down on the digging. Uh, the t- uh, at 10 feet, the shaft narrowed, so only two men could get down there and work at a time. At 15 feet, the shovels hit boulders. They started using pulleys and buckets, uh, mules to pull the rocks out. Uh, the sun set and rose. It was an unusually warm Friday. That's now, not good. now it's been a week. It's Friday. Um, Jesus. Yeah. You're, you're a dude in a, a fucking hole. They put tarps up over the thing because well, there was nice. rain. Yeah, it finally looks like the circus that it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the pace slows down, obviously. Groundwater is now seeping into the shaft. Which we know is good. We've learned from earlier that that's you right. want as much water, water going into this situation as possible. But water the nightmare. But the groundwater is making the walls crumble when they dig. So they're it's right. just, yeah, it's so. a shit show. The pace of digging is now down to six inches per hour. Okay. So that's what Sting does. At the thirty at the thirty hour timetable that they, that Henry put down, uh huh. They're just seventeen feet in, not fifty five. Sure. Okay. Right. So that's slower. Uh, yeah, if, it is. If you slower. Don't, I, don't know, I don't know how you were in math, but that's less. Not good, but I'm able to figure out that that is less than yeah, promised. Less. Yeah. Floyd's father Lee was up top pacing. Lieutenant Burden was worried Floyd would die of hypothermia. And got permission to use a 75 foot hose to blast Man, warm air. Man, I was going air. to suggest earlier this dude might pull a hose out of his ass. What? Warm air into the cave. He's now, what going do we to know about warm, warm air? air? What do we know? What did Johnny say about warming up the cave? We don't want to warm up the cave. That's what Johnny said. Yeah. So this fucking asshole wants to blow. Warm air into the cave to heat up Floyd. Right. Yeah. If in the moment makes sense, Johnny loses his fucking shit, and he, and he, he starts screaming at Henry Carmichael, "You're a murderer for allowing Burden to do this." He, he, they're gonna do it. Yeah. Oh my god. Johnny's the only one who's saying no. So the general, Lieutenant General Derhart, has Johnny banned and dragged off by the National Guard. Oh no. So the one guy who knew what the fuck was going on I has don't now like been. This. Like like the movie version you'd expect, the only guy who knows has been dragged off. Yeah. So now locals are furious. They start talking about getting their guns and driving the National Guard off. Oh, my God. <laughs> Any updates? <laughs> Things got really pear-shaped, man. <laughs> How long were you gone? You were gone for three hours? <laughs> it's all fucked. How close are y'all to getting me out? But it's so it's so the fucking stereotype. Die hard. The fucking yeah. This is an FBI situation now, gentlemen. And what was the thing when he says, uh, we're not gonna be able to get in there? Uh, I give you the FBI. Yeah. It's just the fucking idiots. Yeah, right? yeah. The yeah. F- fucking yeah. So Floyd's been down there for two hundred and fifteen hours. When Johnny came uh, to town, he found cars clogging clogging. So Johnny goes back to town. There's cars everywhere. You cannot get anywhere. People are pouring in from all over the fucking country to check out the guy in the cave. Sure. It's, Reporters. It's underground OJ. Photographers, sketch artists, telegraph sketch operators. Sketch artists like, oh, damn it, the photographers are here. <laughs> uh, that's, not gonna, that's not good for our business. <laughs> telegraph operators, radio operators, and other media people stormed the cave, uh, cave city. Skeet's reporting had been in over... 1,200 newspapers across the country making this a huge story. Silent film crews show up to capture footage. Live radio reports are being broadcast from the cave sites. This is one of the first ever like live national media frenzy. It's one of the first big media. So up to this, you would wait for the paper. You'd be like, what's going on with that cave guy? And you'd read the story at night. You'd be like, oh, I can't wait to see in the morning. And you read about the guy in the morning. This is the first time ever people get to sit around Live, the radios right. and listen to this shit. Jesus. So it, the, everyone's just fucking gripped. Um, 
Radio caused people to flood in. At least 10,000 people come to Cave City. Cave City has a population of population of 690 there's okay. not 10,000 people there sure it's like a fucking Woodstock ten, times 30 right okay <laughs> traffic packed the road from the town to the cave pastures were turned into mud parking lots restaurants ran out of food homes were turned into temporary hotels accommodations were so limited that visitors paid to nap in bathtubs <laughs> not sleep overnight just nap a tough nap although when you think about Floyd so it's like a carnival um, this is now the site oh wow hamburgers <laughs> get your hamburgers here vendors sold hot dogs hamburgers and knickknacks families had picnics on the grass snake oil salesmen came and sold miracle potions <laughs> moonshiners or local moonshiners were selling uh, their white lightning Religious groups came and sang hymns and said prayers. And as a reverend... Welcome to Floyd Fest. Floyd <laughs> Fest. Four unbelievable days jam-packed with everything you need at Floyd Fest. Floyd, Floyd, Floyd. Floyd Fest. Uh, a juggler showed up. Blue balloons were sold to children with the word sand cave printed on the side. Yay. A, a nice memento to celebrate the man trapped the in the hole. A, the, the death the of a human. The collapsing bones of a man below. <laughs> Come on and celebrate the slow death of a human. Come on and celebrate the chest collapsing of Floyd. A barbed wire fence was put up around the rescue area to push everybody back. 2,000 excited people watched outside the wire. Ooh. Hardly anyone had come to help. They had all just come to watch. Sure. They came to see Floyd pulled from the cave, dead or alive. Awesome. Good group fun. But that night, the atmosphere died down. They were losing faith they would see anything. Oh, I mean, they drove all the way Boo! there. Hey, sir, you're by the hole. Can I say something? No. Boo! This is the worst hole show I have ever been to. Pardon? It's the worst hole show I've ever been to. I've never seen worse hole shows. Uh, I've seen so many hole shows. All right. Who is, stop talking to those people. My wife was a hole show. Hey, sir, get down. Get down. Get down. I'm going back to the brothel. Uh, go there. God damn it. Idiot. My son, Timmy, puts on a better Just butt go. hole show. Go. Oh, my God. Frogs. He uses frogs. Any of the police want to talk to this man who's putting frogs in his son? I don't do that. Timmy does that on his own. It's uh, just his show. Okay. <laughs> Come on. So the tourists leave. They're okay. all upset. And they think it's bullshit. Right. It's not what they were promised. I want my money back. You didn't pay to come here. Oh. They drove out of town honking while men dug and others paced at the site, worried about their friend and family member. Drizzle came. It starts raining. Oh, I thought Drizzle was going to be a guy. Sergeant Drizzle. Drizzle. Mud oozed down the dig walls. Generators pumped out water. On Sunday, the shaft was 25 feet down, halfway to the goal. Okay. Super slow going. Yeah. Not what we were promised at all. No, 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 no. They tried dynamite, but it barely chipped the boulders. Jesus Christ. He's got to be down there like, please. Somehow morale held held on. They're still they still have high hopes. The volunteers came to to relieve those who who were too tired. The Brotherhood of Hobos sent aid. Wow. Yeah. Someone connected a radio amplifier to the wire of Floyd's light bulb. Now you can hear about how fucked you are. <laughs> <laughs> so what this would do is it would detect vibrations when Floyd moved. So it crackled 20 times a minute, and they realized this was because he was breathing. Okay, so they have a baby monitor. So, yeah, they've made a baby monitor, basically. Okay. So they got this crackle. They know he's okay. But progress is slow. Tuesday comes. Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah, a week and, a week and some change. A week and a half. A a for being technical. Yeah. On Wednesday, February 11th, hour 288. Man. The rain turned to snow. What? The, I mean, uh, come on. The mud froze. Okay. Floyd's light went out. In many ways. The shaft was at 44 feet. Oh, my God. This really is, uh, I mean, this is a race against time. Yeah. Floyd's dad, Lee, asked for donations from people, and then conspiracy theorists jumped in. They fl claimed Floyd was not even trapped. 
This was all about money. Oh, wow. You got to have them. It's fucking America. Is this got to have is them. Q behind this? The family newspapers, railroads and cave city were all cashing in. They said News- newspapers ran out of things to report. It Floyd become, is the cave dummy. It had become a stagnant story. So they started just don't look at that. They started just preaching about or not preaching it, just reporting about the, the conspiracy theories. Right. Cause there's nothing else to tell. It's a guy in a hole. Is he out? But there's no. six feet away from proof, which is the title of the story. Yeah. Six feet away. Some people sent telegrams to Floyd. One came from Kansas, quote, so from Floyd. Oh, f- from Floyd? Yeah. There, it's people trying to make it seem like cons- the conspiracy theory is true. Oh, right. Gotcha. Quote, please contradict statements that I am buried alive in Sand Cave. Tell mother I'm all right. Coming home. Floyd Collins. I just, uh, there are so many similarities at times. <laughs> Fake no, news. Another r- rumor was that the Collins family, loving publicity, deliberately delayed Floyd's rescue. Yeah, he just wanted to eat sausage down there. <laughs> Some said Johnny had stopped rescuers from entering the cave because he worked in real estate and had a financial interest in Crystal Cave. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, who doesn't want to buy the cave where a guy died? It meant that if, no, the other cave, the cave they own. Oh, right. Oh, right. Johnny right. has a piece, so if Floyd dies, he's going to benefit right. by getting his, that part Popularity. of the cave. A resentful, well, also popularity, double. A resentful John Burton said Johnny Gerald was, quote, guilty of nothing short of murder, when Johnny's the only motherfucker who did anything. Keep digging. Stop arguing. The governor told General Denhart to convene a military court of inquiry to look into the conspiracy theories. Oh, fuck. So for a week, military brass interrogated rescuers and witnesses. Homer Collins, Skeets Miller, Johnny Gerald, Robert Burton, Homer, just everybody. The inquiry concluded Johnny did reject help, but so had Burden, Carmichael, Denhart, everybody. Everybody was fighting. Each rescue team believed competing rescuers were incompetent, which was pretty much true. They had little knowledge of caves or they had no organizational skills, but no one had both. Okay. Valentine's Day came. Oh, Floyd how had did been Floyd trapped celebrate? for 36 hours. Okay. I mean, he was down there. Wait, thir- no, 30- 360 hours. Oh, my God. But he's been down. While he was down there, they have held They're a military arguing. inquiry. Right? Yeah. And finished it. Right. And wrapped it up. Right. And they're six feet away. Boys, tell me what's going on with that military inquiry. About three weeks out, Floyd. <laughs> the court concluded no foul play had been involved. Great. Dig. Just incompetence. Dig. 55 deep. deep. 55 feet of dirt have now been excavated. Okay. Carmichael said to dig sideways, right? Because they've gone out 55 feet. They must have missed missed the shot, right? Okay. Floyd had been trapped for 17 days, 411 hours. Oh. He's fine. He's fine. Wait, 17 days, 41 hours? How many? 411 hours. 411 hours. 17 total. days. 17 He's fine. days. I could do this standing up. Uh, I don't think he could. 12 without food. But he probably had water from oh, the water that's any- leaking. Oh, Remember, there's wow. water leaking yeah, yeah, in there. So he yeah. probably has water, but he hasn't had any food for 12 days. Yeah. It's not burning any calories either. So. No. Reporters were packed outside the barbed wire fence. Two dozen telegraph operators stood by. Seven airplanes were in pastures waiting to transport photographic negatives to faraway newsrooms. Wow. Seven. Right. It's good. Good resource management. At 1.30 p.m. on Monday, February 16th, a chisel penetrated the sand cave. They frantically widened the hole, and a rescuer flashed his light in. They had broken through the 10-foot pit. The man eased into the cave and aimed his flashlight at Floyd. Crickets scattered. So he's probably eating crickets. Okay. Good protein. (laughs) The man saw a glimmer. It was Floyd's gold tooth, which was not moving at all. Oh, no. The man said... Shook his head and yelled, quote, dead. Anywho. What? Let's get out of here. That was a good hole digging, boys. Let's go find another guy. Trapped no. in a cave. We're a team now. We're not breaking this up. Uh, we no. got in there. He's dead? Yeah, he's dead. Ah. Uh, he didn't make it. Damn it. Yeah, were you, were you thinking? I mean, he, st- he really hung in there. He did hang in there. Impressive as shit. Yeah. It's a good thing they had that military meeting. That's right. Damn it. Floyd had been dead for three days. He died just after the light bulb, just after the light bulb went out. Officials decided to me uh, to keep Floyd in tune where he was 
thinking if they tried to take the body out, it would be too dangerous for the men. Okay. So on Tuesday, February 17th, motion picture cameras filmed the Collins family as they said goodbye to Floyd. The choir sang, Soil was put in the shaft. They just were like, Baron I mean, all Reyes. we got to do is fill this one. Yeah, he's in a grave. Yeah. The Collins family it was poor as ever. Locals saw Floyd's dad scouring the rescue site for glass bottles. Then the owner of the sand cave, B. Doyle, put up a sign on the highway. 200 yards away, the body of Floyd Collins is imprisoned in sand cave. Oh, no. No. 50 cents. No, I knew it. One could look at the hole that ate Floyd Collins. A man, B. Doyle, had once called the friend. He's now making money off. Isn't capitalism good, though? It is good. It, just makes, it gives you heart. It does. It's, it warms the soul. Empaths do it. Some rescuers got vaudeville contracts and toured theaters. What? It's, it's like when like YouTube stars get TV shows. It, it was it, This was when you would get a contract and just you would go and tell the story of what happened. And yeah. people would come and listen and you'd tell a story. Right. Pretty entertaining. Then uh, what else? Skeets Miller was offered 50000 from a lecture circuit. He turned it down and went back to reporting for the Louisville Courier Journal. Homer Collins toured vaudeville stages for eight months, but he was just trying to save money to get Floyd out of that hole. Quote, I kept thinking of Floyd lying in the muck where he had suffered beyond our power to imagine. I would never have peace of mind if he remained there. After he was able to get enough money, he hired miners on April 17th, and they redug the shaft and removed the rock pinning Floyd's leg. Two months after. He, is that two months? Yeah, yeah, two months. It weighed 27 pounds. Jeez. No, it's three, three months after. Oh, I thought yeah, it was February. Three months. February, March. April, you're right. Whatever. Yeah, yeah I'm good. I'm good. I, I, don't, I, you, I do numbers. You're the you, human you do, calculator. You do, you, do, you, do, you do months. I, I do numbers. That's exactly right. On April 26, 1925, Floyd Collins was put in a grave in the family cemetery. A stalagmite. Might hit you up the ass. That's right. Yeah. Headstone marked his plot. That's nice. Yeah, nice touch. Things had gotten worse since the accident. People were actually avoiding the area now because of Floyd's accident and death. Avoiding, so, like, walking near it? Well, I guess they just thought it was cursed or something, but people were just people not coming to Cave City anymore. Smart. Smart. More and more cave explorers uh, started trying to find the next big cave and losing their lives in underground. So more people were... Yeah, man. People are... are poor they're trying to fucking make money mm -hmm. and in this area what are they going to do find a fucking cave strike it rich we'll be back there yeah the federal government was aware uh, uh this was becoming a problem lee collins floyd's dad sold the stake in crystal cave okay that wasn't all he sold no god damn it no what why it's your child he agreed to allow Dr. Henry Thomas, a dentist, to exhume and display F Floyd's body a in, dentist? A, in a glass-covered coffin inside Crystal Cave. Oh, man. Oh, that's what... Uh, oh, uh, I got $10,000. See that down there? Yeah. So that's where you'd go and check him out? Yeah. Uh, the horrified Collins family... Uh, you know what? I give you permission when I go. Yeah. You're allowed to put me on display and make money off I it. I love that. All right. I love that. Thank you. You can do the same with me. I appreciate that, man. Actually, I want to be in the body farm. <laughs> uh, the horrified Collins family obviously wanted to stop people from looking at the embalmed body of, quote, But the, the dad greatest, said he did it. Greatest cave. The sport. dad wanted this. Yeah, but the rest of the family. The rest was, of the family was like, that seems rude. Yeah, the rest right. of the family was bummed. Insensitive. Um, Congress authorized turning Mammoth Cave into a national park in 1941. One reason was so the government could control who went underground because all these guys are going down there and dying. Right. So they're buying it up piece by piece, but they bought the big piece and then they slowly went and bought all the little caves. So they're buying up caves around the area. Sure. Um, so it needed to own the land, obviously. It's buying up. In 1961, the government bought Crystal Cave for $285,000. Okay. Uh, Floyd was still inside. Floyd was, oh, God. Oh, my God. Oh, God. In 1961, there he is. Ugh. Um, eventually, public access to the clo cave was closed off. In 1989, Floyd's body was buried in a Baptist cemetery. Oh, right on time. Jesus Christ, man. Professional covers eventually, uh, cavers, professional cavers eventually confirmed Floyd's hunch. 
the caves in the region are all connected. 405 miles of passageways. The Mammoth Cave System is now the world's longest. But one cave is isolated. Sand Cave is still separate. Hmm. In the 80s, the cave entrance was permanently sealed with a steel gate bolted and welded shut. To this day, cavers continue to explore the 405 plus mile mammoth system and find the letters FC scratched into the rocks. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah. Jesus, what? (laughs) That is where the phrase get her done came from. That's what? Where the phrase get her done came from. Right, right. People don't know that. Wow, what a uh, what a little ride. <laughs> How do you feel about yourself? Uh, good, Mer- good that like, I should not complain on planes anymore. Do you feel like America is better or worse than it was? I think America is better than it was, but in a race to be worse. Yes, that is correct. We are the winnerest losers of all winner yeah. loser town. No, we're the, yeah. Or the the winners who are like, we'd never lose. Just the fact that... We're the bad guy in an 80s movie. Like, can't a man just die? Like, can't a man just just have a problem and die and not have that? Well, you know, like, even when you talk about something like that, like today, right, we wouldn't... People wouldn't come there and sell hamburgers and stuff, but... It would be exploited in the other ways where the news would be there with the breaking news logo up the whole time. What's the difference between the barbed wire and the 2,000 people around it and selling hamburgers and watching on CNN? Yeah, it's a sensationalism. They're selling ads. For sure. It's all the same. You're making money off of a guy's suffering. The news is making money off of suffering. And that that is the thing that that we love now more than anything is like... Capitalism and the news don't work. Because you do not get the news if there is profit incentive. You know what I was thinking? You get something else. You get hysteria. You get nonsense. But if it's not profitized, if they can legally not get ratings, the news is the news. Yeah, the news is a huge problem. And what I was thinking the other day is like what you really need is we need somebody who is like like – in charge of ordering our problems in charge of like just someone who's just like yeah i understand how upsetting that is but you know we need to save earth in order to solve palestine you know but then what i realized was we did have that it was the person who was the news anchor that person was like here are the six fucking things that are terrible here's what's going and that's how you knew what mattered cronkite Cronkite would divorce devote an entire 30 minutes to one subject yeah or and but like dan rather you know like over the years it was like you had this kind of one or two people who would be like telling you what was important and Mm -hmm. yeah like you're saying like cronkite would be like okay you know the the vietnam is such a huge story that's what we're going to talk about instead but now because there's so many voices it is the it's it, that is the by by reporting on the president's tweets if everyone in the media who felt like they were fed up of the behavior and like the treatment of the press and stuff were just like we will no longer report the tweets yeah. if they all agreed to do that what a huge leg that takes out there's, from the way that the the people communicate there's their stories about people taking all their scooters in Santa Monica electric scooters that are yeah. being put everywhere yeah People are getting mad that they're on lawns and stuff. And so there's all these stories of people throwing them in the water yeah. and setting them on fire and doing all this stuff. But I think that if they do that, they should be made to watch a five minute video of the fires in Northern California and um, the people dying uh, from heat yeah. uh, all over the world and just have to watch that and go, are, are you sure Are you sure the scooters are the problem? Yeah, we need a lot. A lot need more a lot people need to get clockwork oranged. Oh, fuck yes. Like, we oh. need to set up, like, open, like, United That's Artists Cinemas. That's the fucking cinemas. answer to everything. Yeah, clockwork just, orange people. Just got to start clockwork orange. How is that not a thing? And here's how you do it. You just set it up anywhere where there's those things where it's like put your business card in to win a cruise. Yeah. Anybody who throws their business card in there, right there, all clockwork, they get orange. clockwork orange. Absolutely, Absolutely right up to that. Yep. By the way, there's some people listening right now who are like, how the hell did they make a guy getting trapped in a cave about Trump? <laughs> oh, everything's about Trump. Hey, Say I'm sorry. Guy. I'm sorry if you think that, that we're being um, wrong and, and tying the, everything into Trump. 
But guess what? Shit's fucked. Deal with it. Yeah. Honestly, deal with it. Well, be, you know, be a big boy. A lot of times, uh, like when you're dealing with, uh, you know, like uh, a movement that is leading you towards fascism, mm. uh, you have two options. Uh, you can either tie a rope around it and mm -hmm. try to drag it out. Yep. Or just take the shoe off. Take the shoe off. And, Grease um, it up. I think it'd be better to just take the shoe off. Just don't let, let everybody in the cave. That's yeah. the worst thing. And what we're doing right now is we're the people on land arguing about how to get Floyd out of the cave while he dies. That's right. Yeah. 100%. All right, right everybody. Aaron, it's did been you, fun. Are you freaked out about the cave story? It is quite literally my worst nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I think it's Ticketmaster that refuses to put up our picture because the guy thinks that it's offensive. I think it's Ticketmaster. Oh, yeah. Well, like the head guy of Ticketmaster thinks it's offensive. Grow some balls, Ticketmaster. You're offensive. Yeah. That'll um, show him. Your existence. All right. Uh, all right. Bye. I was on cars. Carry on.